Let's look at uh, Psalm 149, verse number 1. Psalm 149, 1. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song in His praise in the congregation of saints. Turn to Romans chapter 10. While you're going there, I'm going to read Psalm 22, 22. I would declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. And Hebrews 2, 12 saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church while I sing praise unto thee. Amen. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Let's open with a prayer. Uh, thank you, God, for being able to share your word here again tonight. Uh, please bless this time that we have together and be with us as we preach. Uh, thank you for the great preaching you've had so far. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God is everywhere, good churches are not. That's right. Come on. How will you know a good church when you see one? I'd like to ask yourself, why do I go to the church I do? Is it's the good. good church the one that meets closest to your house? Is it the one no. where the building has a Starbucks inside? No. <laughs> no. Is it the go one with the kind of music you like? Go on. Is no. it the one where all your friends go? Is it the one with a woman preaching some smooth, feel-good message? <laughs> Before you can recognize a good church, you have to know what is church and what is the purpose of church. That's right. It's good. Church is a congregation of believers. It's not a building. It's not watching Joel Osteen or George Fryer on TV. Right. It's good. It's not listening to sermons on the internet. Right. Yep. It's right. not us standing here preaching tonight. That's right. Yep. It's getting up Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night and physically getting together with other believers led it's by good. a pastor. Amen. That's so right. Look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3. The pastor is also known as a bishop. Let's see what 1 Timothy chapter 3 has to say about a bishop. And uh, verse 1. This is a true saying of a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire the good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? The purpose of the church is to edify the believer. That's right. It's not a show. It's not entertainment. It's got a feel-good pick-me-up. It's good. It's not the gospel for the lost. Unless you're out on the street, then that's what it's all about. Right. Yeah, that's that's right. It's the good. church soul winning. That's what we just spent our whole week in doing. Amen. Yeah. It's good. But the actual church session is to help Christians grow. Yep. All right. It's time to name some names. Amen. Come on. Come on. Good. 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 Shut up when I'm preaching. <laughs> <laughs> of places where nobody's going to grow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mineral Baptist Church between Fort Ashby and Kaiser, West Virginia. Come on. This is the social club that I grew up in. Wow. After years of listening to them preach out of an NIV, um, I had no idea if I was going to heaven, and I had never heard of the term soul winning or even any concept like that. Thanks for nothing. That's good. Area Independent Baptist Church in Fort Ashby, West Virginia. Dan's one word. I was checking this place out, and the guy started preaching out of an NIV about how people will deliberately twist scripture, and I just had to laugh at that. <laughs> I waited Good. a few more minutes to see if he would say anything else funny, but he didn't, so I just got to laugh right in the middle of the service. Good. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And then a few weeks later, I dropped off an outlace of sermons on the doorstep. <laughs> just playing some seats. Hopefully somebody will hear it and wake up. Yeah, that's good. And uh, Maranatha Baptist Church in Raleigh, West Virginia. The first time I went there, the guy was talking about great preachers, and I heard the names Spurgeon and Wesley. That was the first red flag. And after another time or two, they had this big sign on the wall with Abraham Lincoln and some kind of quote about genuine repentance. 
and that shouldn't be a problem, except every time I've seen this phrase used before, it's always somebody talking about, you have to be sorry for your sins. Right. No, yep. you don't. You should be, but you don't. Right. Right. And uh, then one time we spent an entire sermon begging for money for the missionaries. You want to get people saved, throw some money in the plate. Is that how it works? Nope. Did I get saved because somebody paid for it besides Come Jesus on. Christ? Good. No. That's good. I got saved because Richie said, hey, let's go outside. That's good. That's good. Yeah. What do you think a person has to do to get to heaven? He showed me what a person has to do to get to heaven. Now well, I'm going to heaven and it didn't involve one cent. It involved a soul winner. Amen. It's good. involved Amen. a shy person finding the strength to say, hey, let me pull you out of the fire. It's good. Amen. So, yes, tithing is good and the commandment of God. Yes, free will offering is good. Supporting a missionary, a real missionary, is good. But don't focus so much on the money. That's not what it's all about. Right. You're already in First Timothy. Look at the uh, First Timothy, chapter six. Chapter six. Look at verse ten. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Which right. while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many arrows. So be careful about money. Then we sang victory in Jesus. I forgot that Kevin called out the word salvation in the song or I wouldn't even have started. But we were singing along and I got to that line that says, I repented of my sins and won the victory and I just stopped singing. I was thinking, what's going on? This isn't right. Yeah, amen. And, right. Uh, 